Hi there, my name is Dr. Annette Bosworth and today I'm talking about kidneys and ketones. We're gonna set this story straight. If you've checked into any of the other videos, you know that I give little lessons on why ketones and ketosis has so many health benefits. And the kidneys are no exception to those lessons. Kidney function. We use the word kidney function to talk about how well your kidneys clean the blood. Your kidneys are those quiet little organs that do a ton of work and don't complain much. When I'm teaching kids or middle schoolers about kidneys, I like to refer to them as the cowboys. They put up with a lot of crap, maybe a lot of waste, and they don't speak much. They're very stoic, they do their job, and they don't complain. Let's compare this to the heart. You've all heard of a heart attack. That's because the heart is a wimp. One little thing goes wrong with the heart and it's screaming with pain or pounding from the inside of the chest or makes you short of breath. The heart is a wimp when compared to the symptoms put out by the kidneys. If you want to know how your kidneys are doing, we have to do a test. And that test is called the kidney function test. If you score a perfect test on your lab report, you'll get 100% which means the kidneys are working at 100% of their capacity to keep the blood clean, to keep the waste products out of the blood and putting them in your urine. If you score an 80% on the test, we call that stage one kidney disease. Score a 50% and we call that stage three kidney disease. If you score a 15%, we put you on dialysis. You can't live long when only 15% of the kidneys are cleaning the blood for the whole body. Patients come in and they don't know they have any kidney disease. We'll do a blood test and they'll show up with 30, 40, or even 50% of their kidney function that is gone. And they have no symptoms. Those stoic cowboys have said nothing about the lost kidney cells that they've suffered. Today's most common reason for killing off kidney cells are blood sugars that are too high, but you don't know it. Your average blood sugar is, should be 83. And with an average sugar like that, kidneys live forever. They do great and keep up with the demands. If your blood sugars sneak up to 100 or an average of 120, then bam, those kidney cells start dropping like flies and they don't tell you it's happening. Once your kidney cells have lost function, they don't really come back. I kind of hedge on that because I hate to give up hope, but if you come in and your kidney function is at 50% and you didn't know it, but you've got a big tummy or you've had blood sugars that have been in that 100 or 120 range and we ship you into shape. When we get those blood sugars controlled and we get that weight off, I can see their kidney function come back up to a 70% or even an 80% and they can live happily ever after never hearing from their kidneys again. But if you show up with 20% of your kidneys left, the chances we're gonna get a major response back even if you do lose the weight is very unlikely. The internet correctly warns that if you have kidney problems, you should be very careful about eating too much protein. Protein breaks down with a high amount of nitrogen, which turns into urea, and the kidneys are the sole cells that take care of that uremia, or urine in the blood, and put it in your bladder. If you put in a lot of nitrogen and your kidney cells are on the down low, like 20%, you're gonna get stuck with a lot of urine in your blood and that can be deadly. If you have kidney problems, a high protein diet can be very dangerous. But remember, a ketogenic diet isn't a high protein diet. It is a high fat diet. I'm talking 70 to 80, and I've even seen patients do 90% fat in their diet with a ketogenic diet. Even if it's just the 70 to 80% fat, no matter how you slice those other percentage points, there's little room for protein. If you eat too much protein on a ketogenic diet, you will leave ketosis. Your blood sugars will, will be too high. A ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. And I contend it's one of the nicest things you can do for your kidneys, especially if you've had a less than ideal report. Remember, ketones are these wonderful little molecules that almost translate to not having inflammation in your body. The higher your ketone level on a ketogenic diet, the more I can be guaranteed that your system is living with a lower and lower amount of inflammation. You wanna tick off kidney cells, add a bunch of glucose to that blood, have a high blood sugar. If you add a little pressure, like high blood pressure, and then you add some medications that are all cleared by the kidney, 
you're gonna see kidney cells drop like flies. You add in ketones and a ketogenic diet, not only does that come with a lower blood sugar, but you also find blood pressures to decrease when they're on a ketogenic diet as well. Now add in the anti-inflammatory effect of that ketone and you've got the golden trifecta. Lower blood sugars, lower pressures, and anti-inflammatory. And let's not forget, a ketogenic diet usually coincides with great amount of weight loss. You take off the amount of mass that those kidneys have to clean in a day by losing weight and you have golden kidneys. I hope this put out the myth that ketones and kidneys do get along, that you can do a lot of repair with a ketogenic diet if you've got kidneys that aren't quite perfect. If you'd like to learn more about this ketogenic diet, check out the book that I wrote any way you can. You can find it on Audible or Amazon. Until next time, thanks for checking in.